is Season 2, Episode 75 of One Man's Opinion. Today, I am discussing the Broadway revival of Bob Fosse's Dancin', currently running at the Music Box at 239 West 45th Street in New York City. Conceived as a dance review, touting to have no villain nor heroes or plots of any significance, Bob Fosse's Dancin' is a love letter to the art form of dance by the man himself. Directed and staged by Wayne Salento, who was a part of the original cast back in 1978, this production maintains the original Fosse choreography. Fosse is still credited as choreographer. There have been some changes in the structure of the review. It has been truncated from three acts to two, which I can only assume shortened the run time. At two hours, 15 minutes, Danson is already a healthy length for a review of any kind. The show is divided up into segments, each with their own theme or narrative, not always a pure story, but more like a pastiche at times. If you're old enough to remember the original Danson, which I'm not, some of the numbers you may have seen have been cut. The Dream Bar is Gone, a segment that Fosse fought for to keep in the original, as well as A Manic Depressive's Lament, 14 Feet, and much of the America segment have all been cut. What we get in return, though, is the splendid Big City Mime segment, which was cut from the original production before opening. That piece in particular may be the closest thing to a pure narrative story. We follow Cyril, played by Peter John Cherson, a wet-behind-the-ears noob in Big City. It's really New York City, but it can understandably be interchangeable with any large metropolitan area. He is immediately swept up in a seedy world of debauchery and frivolous sexual pleasure. Though the sequence is overtly sexual and erotic, it never reaches to the point of tasteless. Much of it is tongue-in-cheek, with plenty of humor to keep the sequence light. The big show-stopping number of Danson is the opening of Act 2 with an extended performance of Benny Goodman's Sing, Sing, Sing. It is a brilliant and dazzling sequence as every cast member gets their moment to shine with their own spotlight sequence. The sequence that unfortunately doesn't work is the America sequence, and I don't blame Fosse, Salento, or the cast for this, but our own divided socio-political world that we currently reside in. We must remember that Danson opened on the heels of the bicentennial celebration of 1976, and there was a resurgence of patriotism at the time. Unfortunately, with nationalism having a solid footing in the United States at the moment, Depictions of patriotism in any way, shape, or form right now, even in Danson's more subdued and darker interpretation in this production, it feels sullied, like American nationalists have appropriated and perverted patriotism for their own means, so now any representation of patriotism feels uncomfortable. As for the performers, the dancing is mostly on point. The opening was a little sloppy and out of sync at times, but the rest of the show fell into a gorgeous array of color and movement. The acting is hit and miss, but that's to be expected with a dance show. During the casting process for a show like this, if you're given the option of a person who can grand bop ma themselves in the face and do a quad pirouette versus a person who can only do three pirouettes and can only raise their leg 155 degrees, but is a better actor, you go with the person who can kick themselves in the head and do a quad pirouette. With Fosse, it's all about mood. That's not to say everything has to be cool, dark, and sexy with the bowler hat and Siggy in the mouth, though there is plenty of that here. Remember that for every Hernando's hideaway, there's a once a year day. For every big spender, there's a rhythm of life. Salento and the ensemble of dancers appreciate that and give a robust degree of emotion and color throughout in various forms of dancing. Some of the highlights I haven't mentioned yet include Jacob Guzman and Yaman Brown in the recollections of an old dancer segment, Dancing to Mr. Bojangles. Tony Delelio, Maddie Love, and Nando Moreland are delightful in 3 and 1. There's a fantastic precision releve tiptoe sequence by the ensemble during percussion, and Colton Krauss kills it during the trumpet solo in Sing Sing Sing. I love the use of scaffolding as the set design by Robert Brill. It's simple, easy to get out of the way when necessary, and adds height and dimension to the show. I did find Finn Ross's video design a bit too much, pulling attention away from the dancers at times. Generally, when it comes to video and projection, I'm very much a less is more person, and here it was way too much more. 
Reed Bartlemé and Harriet Young's costumes are sleek and sexy and overall fantastic. Bob Fosse's dancing, though, is an overall delight of a dance show and still celebrates the brilliance of a man who, 36 years after his passing, is still a figurehead in the dance world. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments. If you'd like to see Bob Fosse's dancing, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by becoming a patron on my Patreon page for as little as $1 a month, and you get access to exclusive content. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the stage adaptation of Life of Pi, currently on Broadway. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at the theater.